What's going on, friends? Unfortunately, we're doing the severe weather thing again on the third consecutive weekend. Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you. There is our system materializing. I have the important stuff in our ticker below. And of course, I'm going to have the chapters in the description if you want to bounce around. We're going to take you hour by hour and day by day, show you the high resolution future radar so that you know what to expect and some of the hazards coming your way. There's also uh, snow and ice on the cold side of the system. So a lot to get to. We're going to jump right into it. If you like hanging out with us and talking about the weather, you're coming to the right place. Hit that subscribe button if you want to. All right. So there's our system developing. It's right now ejecting out of the desert southwest, and it's going to continue to materialize and gain strength over the next couple of days. In terms of severe weather risk, I think it's going to increase day by day as we close out or start the weekend, I should say. And then really on Sunday is going to be the big day, the outbreak potential day. So here is the opportunity for severe weather tomorrow, extending back from about the Kansas, uh, Iowa, or the Missouri, Iowa border through Kansas City back into Kansas and then also into parts of Oklahoma. The more widespread deal, we've been talking about this for about a week now. The Storm Prediction Center has had this giant chunk highlighted. Main event likely happening from about Dallas all the way to Detroit with enhanced areas at level three out of five already. Uh, just south of Chicago through Indianapolis, St. Louis, back into Memphis into extreme northern Louisiana. So that's going to be where the crux of the severe weather outbreak potential is going to be. That's going to be large hail potential for damaging winds and then maybe even a few strong tornadoes and of course we would love to avoid all of that so here's how it could play out we're going to start this thing early on saturday morning so this is going to be 10 o'clock all times are in eastern uh we have the snowy side getting going in parts of uh the front range of wyoming into western south dakota closer to rapid city we have some scattered shower and thunderstorm activity again that is always a limiting factor and we hope that that happens this time around when you have early crummy stuff around the clouds, the showers lingering. That's going to be four o'clock on Saturday. And you'll notice as we get deeper into the afternoon, here is opportunity number one. We saw that slight risk area, level two out of five, uh, from about Sioux City to Omaha into Topeka, Wichita. That's going to be that little cluster of thunderstorms that could bring the potential for some severe weather. Now, watch what happens, though, as we get into uh, Sunday afternoon and into Monday. We're pausing it there as we get into the early morning hours of Sunday, some thunderstorms rolling around. This is really, though, as we get going, and we're going to be watching for anything discreet or isolated when those uh, storms or cells are by themselves, that's when they're going to have the potential to produce a stronger tornado. So I always like to say supercell thunderstorms are selfish. They want the entire environment to themselves. When you start to get a bunch of storms competing, that's whenever you start to have the bus potential which again is what we like. We like when we erupt storms all at once because then they're all competing for the same environment and then they typically uh, do not uh, reach their maximum potential. We've seen that time and time again, not saying that's going to happen uh, this time around. High resolution uh, future radar here depicting an ugly scenario. So this is going to be 3 o'clock Central, 4 o'clock Eastern, and you see what's happening right around Bowling Green, uh, getting under the Illinois-Missouri uh, border. Uh, south of St. Louis, all of these isolated guys right here, these kidney bean shaped things that I'm highlighting, those are going to have the potential to become uh, produce large hail, damaging winds, and then the potential for those stronger uh, tornadoes as well. So uh, those areas, again, in that enhanced risk where I just showed you, that's going to continue as well. Now, we do see some things uh, getting to a line a little bit. When it turns linear, there's certainly still the potential for some strong tornadoes. That threat does go down a little bit, but notice we have uh, these black areas popping up. That's going to likely be some large hail, damaging winds, and then you're going to also notice these little bowing segments. Again, high-resolution future radar does a very good job at trying to depict what kind of scenario uh, could play out. And we have another strong cluster of thunderstorms down into Arkansas, extending back into northern Louisiana. So it, what first could be these discrete, isolated uh, supercell thunderstorms that produce strong tornadoes could turn into uh, a nasty line of damaging wind potential thunderstorms with some large hail and still some embedded tornadoes. And that's going to go well into the evening. So again, that's coming through Chicago. That's about seven o'clock central. This marches further to the east. Uh, there's 11 o'clock central, 12 o'clock eastern rolling uh, into southern Michigan through Detroit, uh, Saginaw, uh, closing in on Toledo, Ohio. Nasty line of thunderstorms continuing uh, moving into Nashville. 
uh, Tupelo, Greenville. Uh, so it's going to be likely a long night as well, a very busy night. Sorry for all the names popping up. I, I try to put as many names on the map as possible. So if you're watching, uh, you can get the best possible information again and uh, want to give as many people uh, the opportunity to see their town as possible as well. This thread is going to continue into Sun or into Monday, I should say. So that was Sunday that I just showed you there, Saturday into Sunday. Uh, day four risk continues to be there from central Louisiana back up into Boston and then just north of Orlando, Florida. So another big chunk is that line of thunderstorms congeals and then continues to push off to the east. So we're going to be watching that well into Monday before that line of thunderstorms pushes offshore. We've also been highlighting this for the last week or so, the potential for some significant snowfall in parts of the Northern Plains, Upper Midwest. I keep on showing you this. I want to show you the ensembles because I think it gives us a good idea of how this is trending. Uh, more snow, less snow, more north, more south, things like that. And honestly, this has looked very, very similar for the last five, six, seven days that I've showed you guys this. Uh, probability for three inches of snow really exists from about Rapid City through about Ely, Minnesota, into the UP of Michigan to just north of the Twin Cities. I think that is going to be the biggest snowfall potential in that very narrow stripe there. You also see uh, in the northeast um, and then just south of Montreal the opportunity for more snow as this thing exits. So I want to show you again the model forecast. This is going to be the European model. Most models are kind of on the same page here now as uh, we pretty much have this locked in in terms of the track. But I'll get my little dabber out here in uh, just south of Rapid City. Again, anywhere from 6 to 8 inches, maybe even more than that in that blue area. Again, outside of Rapid City. Um, north of the Twin Cities is where we're going to see the highest opportunity for some snow. So there might be a little bit of light snow in, in Minneapolis. I think a lot of it's a wintry mix and a cold rain. But I think the main event is likely going to be from around Alexandria, Minnesota, um, St. Cloud, Duluth, extreme northern Wisconsin, into Ironwood, uh, north of Rice Lake, uh, and then closer to Sault Ste. Marie, Marquette. Look at that, 14 inches of snow um, in extreme northern UP of Michigan into Houghton, Marquette. We'll take a look at your um, opportunity. There's four to maybe six inches of snow there on the model forecast, and then Sault Ste. Marie, we're going to get a little bit of mixing involved, so we could have some ice uh, anywhere from two to four inches of snow. So that is going to be the snowfall forecast again, and then we have this kind of weird thing happening as it moves itself off the coast. We're going to be able to get some snow on the northern side, and we talked about this in yesterday's video. We highlighted that it's likely not going to be a, a go weather-wise to see the partial eclipse in the northeast in Newfoundland. You can check out my earlier video that has the timelines on that. Again, I posted that yesterday. Um, but we're going to have clouds. We're going to have snow around. That is going to be something to contend with. In addition to the snow, there's also going to be a narrow uh, strip of icing that takes place, and that's going to be in this pink color that you see really uh, flaring up Saturday into Sunday. And then on the southern side of this, we're going to have likely some freezing rain. I don't think it's going to be two inches of freezing rain, as the model would suggest. That would be a catastrophic ice storm. It's certainly some icing. Um, Watertown into areas just northwest of Boston and the northeast, and then where we had that transition zone from the heavy snow that was up in this area of Minnesota, we have uh, the light icing from Green Bay to just north of the Twin Cities as well, and then back into southwest Minnesota. So there are a lot of things that we're watching. Of course, the thing of most concern is going to be the potential for severe weather, and I want to show you that severe weather risk area again. If you take, I took a mental picture of where those supercells were. Again, we were popping those really just west of St. Louis, down toward Little Rock, and then down in towards the Shreveport area, and then back up north to really just south of Chicago through a lot of central Illinois. So tomorrow and certainly on Sunday, and then again on Monday, but really on Sunday, that looks to be the main deal here. Widespread severe weather event appears likely, and again, we're going to keep you posted through the entirety of this event and beyond. Hey guys, if you liked what you saw, if you found this content informative or helpful, or if you just like the weather, just talking about the weather, join the best weather community on YouTube. And I'm not saying that about myself. I'm saying that about all of us here. We are more than 100,000 strong. We post in storm reports. We bounce around the country, talk about the weather and all that kind of stuff. So if you like that stuff, if you like nerding out about the weather, learning about the science without the hype and without the misinformation, you're coming to the right place. Hit that subscribe button, and we will catch you in the next video.